Hey, everyone. Welcome to Habs Tonight. My name is Aaron Amadeus, joined with my partner in crime, Mr. Dutch Gretzky, Dale Weiss himself. Dale, how's it going, buddy? Oh, great, buddy. Great, great show last night. Really excited about today. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you go from one guest to another one who is in the superstar status when it comes to the Montreal Canadiens and the National Hockey League. He is your friend, friend of everybody in Montreal, Mr. Thomas Blakedic. How are you, Thomas? Good. You guys? Glad Doing to be awesome. here. Thanks for anyway. Yeah, no, welcome to the show. How's everything uh, where you are? And tell everybody where you are because some people might not know. Yeah, well, right now I'm in Brno, Czech Republic, but obviously playing for Kladno these days and we're in the playoffs. So uh, spending more time in Prague and Kladno and uh, yeah, enjoying time playing and, and uh, being in the playoffs. That time of the year for us. So are you still playing in the same type of position, line, like first line, second line? I, I don't, I don't watch that uh, that league right now. Uh, so. Yeah, it's it's like a bush league, but no. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> come on, come no, on! I'm just, I'm, I'm just kidding. No, it's uh, yeah, it's second league in Czech, and and we're trying to get back up to the first extra league, and uh, you know, it's 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 tough. It's not it's not easy. It's as uh, some of the fans or, or you know people in hockey could think of, but it's. Uh, it's fun. I still like the game. I still like to play, and hopefully, we'll make it. We'll win and uh, advance to to the to the extra extra league or first league, whatever you want to do call you, it. Do you see yourself continuing to play for over a couple of years, and then maybe there's another part of the game that you want to get into, like you know? Yeah, uh, you know what? It's hard. It's hard. I mean, it, it's hard to say. I, like I said, I like the game. I, I am pretty sure I will play another year for sure, and then we'll go from there. We'll we'll see. I mean, you know, I like it. I, I'm you know still uh, uh still healthy you know no injuries and stuff like that so it's all it matters for that and it all depends or uh, if someone wants me and if uh, i want to play and i still like it oh well, i think there are a lot of people who who want you so don't worry, don't worry about <laughs> well, that here, around around you know around my around my family thing you know i'm yeah. not traveling anywhere and stuff like that mm -hmm. so obviously it's, it's it's tough and dale and i were talking about this before you know like at this point, if like you know, tomorrow you're offered an NHL contract, you know, do you take it? Do you not take it? I mean, there's a lot of consideration right now, especially with with you know, unfortunately, with you know the the virus going around and things keep changing. You know, like has that crossed your mind in terms of what you you know plan to do with moving forward? Man, I mean, it's you know, I think I'm hoping that next year is going to be back to normal somehow, at least at least a little bit, you know. And uh, obviously, it's hard for everyone. I think this year was was the hardest. And uh, you know, like I told people around me, I, I don't want to finish retire in front of the em empty buildings. You know, I, I I played all my career in front of twenty two thousand people in Montreal and millions on, on TV, and I enjoyed it so much and. Right now, to retire in front of the empty stadiums and people not really caring about this season, it's not something I like to do. But we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I know Dale's going to weigh in on this, but like, you know, when you played, and I, and I know there's that video clip of you getting an ovation, and you're on the, you know, the the big videotron, and you know, I think you're beside Bergevin in the Bell Center. Everybody's clapping. Teams are, are snapping their sticks. And then you look this year and, you know, uh, you know, like <laughs> it's just empty. It's just like, man, I feel bad for all these players that are going through that. They're never going to have that again. Right. So I don't know. Cringy moments on my end. What do you think about that deal? Well, it's weird. Like, man, when I played in the playoffs, uh, that would have been last July and August, man. It was so weird to play with no fans. Um, it was just weird to be in the playoffs. A, we, we, weren't supposed to be in the playoffs and then you know you get there and there's no fans it's just weird man so i'm um, obviously not playing this year is only a short time for me so i couldn't imagine what that's like obviously being in the smaller buildings for you too and uh man it's difficult for sure right like especially for you to have such a stored career that you did and then uh and then to go back without the fans man it's got to be tough no it's, it's it's so tough man it's, it's it's hard to realize how you know you know especially people around me i mean they they know but it's it's still hard because you play the game and it's hard to find a motivation i mean right actually for me playing for cloud no because we want to advance to the first league as i mentioned before you know it's easier because we're playing for that 
you know, for those playoffs, for for winning the title in this second league and to get get up back up. But uh, other than that, going to small stadiums with no people and you know, uh, it's 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 obviously it's terrible. And that's that's exactly why I said I, I don't want to retire like that. I wanna I wanna play in front of the full building and. It's not about me playing for the building, but like I want to enjoy that moment, you know, the fans right. shooting for the team and you know winning, and then hopefully playing in the playoffs in in actually the good, good, really good quality league. Right, right. Did you ever uh, you ever have consideration of of going to the KHL or anything? No, not never, really. Never, like, right? I mean, I mean, you know, before when uh, when I was younger, you know, back before I, I started in the NHL, I, I had some offers, but but uh no it was it wasn't it wasn't the case for me not, not after not. afterwards as well i i always want to go back home and i was in my stage where i had to be close to my family and 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 right play and check yeah yeah uh, that's interesting that, make, How, that, that makes sense sorry Tim. no no i was just gonna say because i i think that's where i'm gonna head head uh next year so i was uh, i was gonna pick your brain on that uh yeah but obviously, you you just wanted to be close to family, so that makes much more sense for you. Yeah, it's more more like a family reason than 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 playing hockey. Like I said, I still love the game, I still love to play, but but for me, the family is first right now. The priority is uh, somewhere else, and and hockey is hockey is where it's it's after the family, obviously. Right, and that makes sense. So you drafted seventy first overall in two thousand one. I mean, <laughs> you go back to that draft. Do you, I mean, do you remember? Obviously, everybody remembers getting drafted, but think about it. You know, we're 2021 right now. In 2001, you're drafted uh, 71st <laughs> overall. What are your thoughts about that, thinking back all the way now and, and looking back on how your career is, you know, where you are today in your career and how it ended with Montreal, but 71st? Man, I, I don't know. I Like, back then, I didn't even see one NHL game. I mean, I saw some on TV, but I didn't, you know, we had a hard time getting NHL regularly, you know, it's not like these days where you can see one or two games per, per night. So, uh, it was hard. I had no expectations. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know anything about uh, North America or Canada. So I didn't even know the Montreal Canadiens is, is one of the, you know, the best cities to play hockey. And I, I found out after I got drafted actually. So it's, um, it's hard. Like I, I could go like hundred points from now on. What, what I didn't know about it and where I'm today, you know. So, yeah, it, it's it's so many so many things that uh, I enjoyed and uh, and the probably the biggest thing is how fast it went through. Like I mean, it was like I mean, it's twenty years ago, but it feels like it was five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you look at the stats, and I'm not talking just. I mean, obviously you had a storied career, but you know, you're looking at some of the players and that you played with. You got, you know, four different captains. You got Saka Koivu, Brian Gianta, Max Pacioretty, and Shea Weber. Uh, I, there's not many players who can stick with one team. I mean, obviously there was a, a, a cup of coffee in Toronto, but stick with one team, four captains. That's a lot. And then on top of that, uh, six different head coaches. <laughs> In Montreal, in Montreal, and I'm sure every single one had a, a completely different style, and it was very unique. But you know, you went from Randy Cunningworth, Michelle Terry, you had Claude Julian two times, uh, Guy Carboneau, Jacques Martin, friend of the show, Georges Laroc was was part of those teams as well. Same thing with Prusty. Um, three different general managers, two of the the high note ones, obviously Bob Gainey and uh, currently uh, Mark Bergevin. And so there's a, I mean, there's a storied history there. I mean, what was it like? There are a lot of questions we came in from Twitter, but I, 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 I'll get to some of the stuff that I want to kind of put in. What was it like? Each captain, they brought something different, right? So what was it like playing with, with Koivu as a captain versus Shea Weber? You know, like how do those two different, like but what were the difference of approaches between those individuals? Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to compare because it's basically 20 years difference or i mean 17 years difference between those times i mean at the beginning i was obviously a rookie saku was you know i looked up to saku koiwu you know as a superstar in montreal you know going through what he went through and and all of a sudden playing with him on the one team and and hearing him in the room and and seeing him on a daily basis completely different story from from webby when i when i was towards the end of my career and uh you know uh, 
I enjoyed playing for for every captain. It's it's always special to have those kind of a guys on your team and and uh, look up to them. And uh, and um, as I said, you look at it. I think you look at it differently when you're young, when yeah. you're you know in your mid mid kind of time of your career, and uh, when you're towards the end of your uh, end of your uh, career. So, no, oh, absolutely, and especially. Them, Different. Sorry, I was, was going to say the, you know, you went to the conference finals twice with Montreal. Once uh, in I think it was 2010, and then and then another time you went with Weiss when you guys went in 2014, 2015, which was the, mm. you know, the right, team that right. we talk about all the time that we think right. that team if it stuck around together, uh, you know, could have yeah. made some uh, some history in, in Montreal. Mm -hmm. What do you remember most? about that uh that run because we talk about that quite a bit on this show with with some of the guests that we've had before so we know we, uh, we and i'll let we jump in on this because <laughs> he remembers quite a bit about that about that run and obviously <laughs> you had such a, a such a key role uh you know in that run and unfortunately we, we all know what happened with uh with pricey getting hurt but uh i'll let you guys uh chit chat about this a little bit while i uh take a listen this is my my part to listen in yeah for me um I think they're pretty comparable. Like I wasn't on the 2010 team. You can answer this one probably better than I could, but kind of really Cinderella story runs where, you know, 2010, nobody expected you guys to win in the first round. Um, you know, we, we might have been underdogs against Tampa in 2014, but nobody would expect us to beat Boston. So like in 2010, you know, you guys really weren't expected to win the first round. And I think it's pretty similar to us in 2014 where, you know, even if we beat Tampa, they'd say, okay, they won one round. We probably shouldn't have beat Boston. Um, I just wanted you to talk about kind of like the similarities of the teams and uh, and which team you thought was a better team. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's really hard to compare, as you say. I, I think we were deeper, better team in 2014 a little bit than, than 2010. Nobody would really expect us. We, we made a playoffs, I think, towards the end of the regular season. And and we were going to uh, Washington with Ovechkin and then all those guys, all those skilled guys, they should have uh, obviously beat us for nothing and it was supposed to be the end of it. And uh, we won the first game, then uh, obviously game seven in their building, and all of a sudden, wow, I mean, what what, what, what the hell happened? Well, you're forgetting <laughs> and, who scored then, the big goal in overtime there. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> we didn't, we didn't forget. Yeah, it, was, it was, yeah, it was a funny, funny story to it. Uh, uh, before playoff started, actually, oh, but tell us. Uh, <laughs> no, it's a bit Jose and and you know Yager thing and and all those jokes and you know misunderstandings. Yes, yes. <laughs> I remember and, that now. Yeah, that's anyway, awesome. uh, yeah, and then all of a sudden we went to Pittsburgh, right? Same thing. Like we went to all all the arena in Pittsburgh. I love that arena. It was it was I mean it was unreal. Do you play there? We see it. I never got a chance the, to play in oh, that one. Oh, never man. got a chance. I love those old arenas like Madison Square Garden and Pittsburgh Mellon Arena. I mean, it was, it was great. And we won the game seven in their building as well. I was like, holy shit, what's going on here? I mean, <laughs> we beat Crosby and Ovechkin first two rounds. I mean, what's what's going on? Right. But we did we didn't I don't think I don't think we were deep enough at that in that year. And um too serious and, and you know, in seven games it, it's hard to get 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 going afterwards and and we just didn't we, we weren't deep enough, I think, to, to get through Philly, I think, afterwards. Yeah. And well, you know what? 14, I think we should we should have I, I felt like we have a we have a better chance. We were structured with you know with Michelle mm -hmm. with, with Michelle that we were structured very well and, and we actually played played really well uh playoff hockey and unfortunately didn't it was very similar actually with that series with against Rangers. It felt like we are kind of out of out of gas a little bit, right. but I, I think we were a better team in 2014 to make yeah. it. Man, I think about it all the time. And, and uh, you know, you talk about the two game sevens in 2010. And for us, like that Boston series, we were talking about with Presti last night where, man, like Burge just high five and the boys on the way off. Like beating yeah. Boston for us was almost like winning the Stanley Cup. And um, it just kind of took the steam out of us. We never really talked about it last night where, Literally, we won that game seven on a Thursday, and then game one against the Rangers was like Saturday afternoon. Like there was yeah. no no yeah. time in between series. So, you know what what is what do you think if Pricey doesn't get hurt? Um, obviously, you know I think Dustin Tokarski went in, and and I think he played well. I mean, it, I don't think it was you know it, it had nothing to the game itself. I don't think it 
had anything to do with with the dusting bin and that uh mm-hmm. you know on ice stuff but obviously when you have pricey in the net it's 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 it's, it's a mind game right it's a different story when when you know uh, you know when you go into the game and and you see price in the net it's it's a bit different when you have a backup goalie or or anybody who didn't play for a while and stuff like that so and yeah, speaking of the afternoon can... game and sorry to interrupt speaking about the afternoon game a lot of fans have always wondered does that change the dynamic when you guys are about to go in and battle and play and then all of a sudden you go from these you know seven o'clock eight o'clock nine o'clock night games everybody's pumped up and it just seems like the atmosphere is a little bit different when you're going into an afternoon game is it a fan perspective that that you know maybe i'm, I'm wrong or is there something to that good question um you know we i started playing a ton when i went to philly and i actually got used to him and i really liked him but you know montreal we never like how many afternoon games did we play a year plucky maybe two like yeah, two in february I, I, so we two, yeah you you talk about it. like we didn't play very many so it's kind of weird to start playing them in the playoffs a little bit right yeah it's true but like personally me i loved it like i love to play afternoon games. i remember you did love those i (laughs) I love afternoon games but yeah you're absolutely right we we never we never had montreal uh you know saturday nights we always played you know seven games seven 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 p.m games uh even even sundays in in case we had some you know we always played at night and um I loved it. I, I I missed more afternoon games, and then good question is, did it hurt us in the playoffs? I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's a big big change for me. But so why why did you like afternoon I, games? I don't know. I just you know, I just you just kind of feel like you don't have to go for a morning skate. You don't waste any time during the day. You know, sleeping in, and, and I mean going for a nap in the afternoon and you just kind of have a good breakfast you know good brunch you rest a bit and you go out there you play right away and you go to bed early or you you know you're back home earlier and uh just just for some reason i like those that's such an interesting take i never thought about that now they always put you as one of the shut down centers right so you always got the tough assignments against you know crosby like i mean all the, the top centers in the nhl was like okay plecky's there don't worry he's gonna shut them down right so as fans we were watching saying okay we always have a chance because you know you were in the lineup and you were going up against those just like you know you have price in the nets you always have a chance was that a part of your game that you wanted to have at the beginning or was that something that you developed along the you know along the way? You know when you first started with number thirty five uh, in Montreal, which a lot of people don't remember, was your first number, and then you went to fourteen. But you, you know, you is it something that you developed along the way, saying, you know what, I'm going to be one of the best shutdown you know centers in the game. I think they thought they drafted the goalie. They gave. Me <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was disappointed with thirty five number. Very uh, the first chance I had, I I, I took fourteen. But anyway, uh, no, I I wasn't defensive forward at all. Like like my defensive game started to pop up a little bit in the minors, a little bit, and then later on in Montreal, uh, you know, I learned more and more of uh, being a two way forward. I I've never. I actually never was two way forward. I always was a more offensive, you know, uh, player. And uh, then Doug Jarvis and Miners and Claude Julian, uh, you know, a little bit in Montreal. They, they, you know, they preach on me a lot uh, to get better defensively and to play two way game, be responsible. And and you know, along the way, I learned that and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the challenge to play against those guys. They were best players in the game, and I enjoyed it. But I never took it. It was about me. It was always, you know, I, you know, playing with, let's say, you know, in 2010 when we played the playoffs, you know, having a George, George, Josh, uh, Georges, and uh, Hal Gill playing behind you, or later on Shea, Shea Weber playing behind you as as a D, and and uh, and before that some other guys who played behind you as a good defensive, responsible players who you know what they're gonna do and they will help you out in case you you fuck up and you know it's 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 easier a little bit but i enjoyed it it was a great challenge that's incredible i I always thought your offensive game was so underrated too um i think so many people never realized that about you um i know for me being a fan of the canadians when i watched you before even when i came to the team i was like man this guy's so good and nobody ever talks about him and then when i finally got a chance to play with you like see you every day in practice and see the things you could do offensively i think it was just your offense was so underrated and uh, and I think 
if people didn't watch you every night, they couldn't get a true appreciation for how good you really were. So I, I know playing with you personally, like a, you were just so underrated throughout the whole league. I remember one of our goals in Detroit, you backhanded me one. Oh, one I still watch that. And Absolutely. Then, uh, one time I there, I remember yeah. that goal. It was, it was, yeah. It was, uh, it was sick. I, wow. I loved it, man. I, I, uh, we had, we connected for a couple in yeah, 2016. Yeah. And I got the chance to bump yeah. up with you a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Help my that. offense. I remember that. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, just, I was very defensive back then and you helped me out with being offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance, man. A little so. sneaky, <laughs> sneaky offensive <laughs> whiskey out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So before we get to the Twitter questions, um, I got to ask you, uh, you know, and we and I were talking about this before and maybe we can talk about this because he went through a very similar thing when he got traded to Chicago and we did a show about this the other day. Um, you know, he had a conversation with, with Bergevin, you know, uh, at, you know, we see, you can probably talk about this a little bit more than I can. Cause you know, yeah. it's better if it comes from you than me. So I'll, <laughs> I'll leave this to you and you know where it's going. So. Right. So I know when I talked about it, um, and I was kind of in a different situation for you where, you know, the, the, the trade piece they had coming back from Chicago was a huge deal. It's still a great deal. Um, you know, they got filled in Owen now uh romanov on defense for me and, and fleischman so that's a pretty good deal for them they obviously were not turning that one down but right. but uh I, I think it was obviously different for you um you know where, where you guys probably obviously you can talk on it but you obviously you know work something out and, and trying to put you in a good situation where you could go win and then you came back you know in, in free agency which was something um you know they made me the offer but for me i was kind of like I was kind of scarred a little bit at that point that I couldn't come back and I, I just couldn't get myself to do it. So, um, you know, talk about that as much as you want, where, where the conversation happened with you and Burge when you got traded and, uh, and how did it work coming back? Was that obviously something that was predetermined when you got traded or, or how'd it work? Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, during the year, obviously, you know, my, my contract was up that, that year and, and, uh, we started talking, I, I, I don't know just guessing right now around christmas time maybe or something like that and i, I told birds right away i don't want to go anywhere i just want to keep you know i want to keep playing in montreal and and you know right. if he if he can if he wants obviously uh you know uh, i don't mind staying in and, and finishing the year in montreal and 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 play another year in there but uh you know uh, at, at you know at the stage of my career i would say i you know i was a good i was probably good good uh, player to to get traded to get something back mm -hmm. for playoffs and that's what happened and uh, i didn't know where i'm gonna go i didn't know what's going to happen until until last probably day or two before i got traded so um that's when it happened and uh, then burst told me not to play against i think it was a tampa bay that night in montreal and then now it's and i knew it's 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 coming so i didn't i didn't know where where but uh, i found out next morning and um he told me it's Toronto. So, um, and how did that make you feel? <laughs> yeah, that must have been was, weird, man. It, it, yeah, I, I kind of stopped for 15 20 minutes and I was like, holy shit. Like, I mean, <laughs> Montreal Canadiens and Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, that's uh, man, for as long as you played uh, too, like, it's crazy. That's, that's unreal. I mean, you know, it's uh, I might be the luckiest guy in the world or you know, or the other way because you're going to the probably the biggest rivalry team and, and the city and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, in the end of the day, I look it back. I, I was, I was, I was happy. I mean, playing with such a talented players as, as Marner and Matthews and, and, um, Patrick Mauro, you know, veteran legend. And, uh, obviously Mike Babcock as a coach, Lula Moriello as a, as a GM, great experience for me. Looking back, it was, it was a, great 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 experience where i'm still thinking about it right now what i what i experienced in in toronto and uh i enjoyed it there it was it was it was a good run in you know in the end of the day we lost boston but uh, you know uh, i enjoyed it and uh you know I'm very happy to go back to montreal the, the you know the following summer yeah, no, it all it all came full circle. And when you were in Toronto, you had you, you shaved the goatee. And I remember my wife yeah. and I were watching the game, and we're like, "He looks twenty years younger." It changed everything. <laughs> a baby face. We're like, yeah, "Yeah, look at that." It must have been hard because, like, now you're wearing blue, and you're used to checking blue. And I'm like, 
I wonder if, if, if man, it was go- harder than I thought it's going to be. Seriously, like, really? like I thought, well, you know what? It's just, you know, it's just the jersey. And I, you know, I grew up in Cladno. We are, you know, a uh, blue and uh, blue and white team. You know, I grew up as a white and blue. And uh, being in Toronto after all those years from Montreal, it felt weird. Like it felt different. You know, and in the end of the, I look at it. I mean, I'm wearing Toronto Maple Leafs logo. It's it's. I mean, wow, it's, you know, original six team. I mean, what can you ask better, you know, to experience Montreal Canadiens, Toronto Maple Leafs? I mean, two hockey cities, best in the world, probably, and uh, being lucky like that. But it was, I I gotta, I gotta, uh, I really have to say it was, uh, it was, it was weird. It was something that where I look at in the practices or in games, it's like, Holy shit! I'm missing the red here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and you didn't have flour kicking around the room. That must and have flour too. wasn't around. You know, I was like looking around the guys. I was like, flour, <laughs> where are you? <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, who's flour? The, the uh, like team service guy in Montreal. He's been there forever. Ah, so. Okay, so shout Lucky out to flour. Lucky used to run his show all the time. Uh, so it's funny. <laughs> 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 get me this get me that I, lo- oh, I love it so uh, listen I- i'm gonna say this and then we see can 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 say a couple of things here but you know from all hab fans out there and obviously our show is Habs tonight but it's all hockey it's not just the habs uh want to thank you for everything that you did with the team being drafted 71st in 2001 to an amazing career i mean honestly plecky it's it's unreal what you accomplished in that city what you did for montreal the goals you scored the memories for all the fans you are one of the most beloved uh, players in, in Habs history, and that honestly should say a lot. When we asked fans who to come on the show that really wanted to talk to, you were number one. It's amazing, and, and you have that impact and that effect. And I just want to personally thank you as a fan and as well as as, as, as a business partner with, 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 with Dale – you know, we, we look at this and we say, okay, who can come on the show? And you know what? Who is reserved enough that, you know what? We know they're a little bit reserved, but we're going to get them out of their shell a little bit. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's, let's get Plecky on. We'll get him out of his shell a bit. So, and I think we, we did that today a little bit with you. So thank you so much from a, from a, from a fan's perspective. And I'll leave that with Weiss because I know he's, he's probably going to want to say the same thing. Yeah, I was going to touch on again when we asked the fans, Plecky, um, it was unanimous that you were you were the guy that everyone wanted to get on. Um, you know, you'd have one guy here and then it was five Pleckies and then someone else and then five more Pleckies. So that was that was obvious. And I know for me, man, I, I truly respected you as a teammate. Um, you know, for someone to play a thousand games is absolutely insane. And, um, you know, as a guy that I, I played half that, so I, I know how hard that is. And, uh, you know, the way you did it and the type of person you will, man, uh, I have so much respect for you, and I really appreciate you coming on with us. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having my same same with you, PZ. But uh, you know, uh, remembering a lot and went through a lot. Unfortunately, we didn't make it that year, but you know, enjoyed it, and uh, I wish you all the best next year, wherever wherever you decide to play, and uh, stay all healthy and safe uh, these days. I appreciate you. that, buddy. You as well. You Any last words too. for the for the fans in Montreal? Sorry. Any last words for the fans in Montreal watching right now? Stay positive. <laughs> Stay patient. <laughs> positive. That's all. All you need. <laughs> positive, plucky. There's so many new, uh, you know, nicknames oh, we're gonna get out of this. Hashtags I, everywhere. <laughs> hashtag positive, plucky. <laughs> Pause on the plucky. I love it. This is great. Uh, Thomas Buchanan, thank you so much. And I probably butchered the name there, but I thank you so much for for being on the show. Uh, it was awesome. It was a pleasure. And I uh, can't wait to see. Hopefully your team uh, makes it and you get to win where you, where you currently yeah. are right now. Yeah. And this is not the last time we see you in the mm-hmm. NHL. Thanks, guys. Well, take Thanks, care, buddy. buddy. Thank you. Take care, you too.